So macronutrients, most of you know of the macronutrients only, and you know just carbohydrates, proteins, and uh, and vitamin. Uh, no, carbohydrates, proteins, and 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 the fats, the lipids. And this is where our doctors start messing us up because they've made us believe that food are only three. We only have three types of foods, but those are macro. They are needed in larger quantities. So macronutrients, the carbohydrates, of course, the protein, and the fats, stroke lipids. When I'm talking about the fats, I'm not talking about your oils, the seed oils. No, I'm talking about saturated fats. Okay? So that's a topic for another day. We will discuss seed oils so that we can actually show you where the problem comes in. Because some people tell me, oh, Dr. Ari, you know what? I, I have cold pressed uh, my, my seeds and I've gotten this oil. Can I use it for cooking? So we'll discuss that uh, one day on our lives. All the same. So carbohydrates, protein, and fats. Now, all these things, when you eat them, they'll be broken down to the least of their forms so that it can be absorbed into the system. So we break uh, carbohydrates into polypeptides and then dipeptides and then, mon no, not peptides, carbohydrates into polysaccharides, uh, disaccharides, and then monosaccharides. I know you guys know these things. So monosaccharides are the ones that are actually absorbed. And for the monosaccharides, we only have three. We have the glucose, we have the galactose, and we have the fructose. So any carbohydrate you eat, be it a fruit, and I hope most of you uh, can remember that fruits are actually carbohydrates, be it beans. I know you know beans are carbohydrates. After arguing that there is all carbs, we've had all these arguments, now you've understood that 65% of the bean is fiber and fiber is carbohydrate. Therefore, beans are carbohydrates. Okay? So now you break them down to glucose, you break fruits down to fructose, you break milk down to uh, galactose. Now, these three are the ones that are absorbed into the bloodstream and they have their own path. We discussed about carbohydrates. On the protein, we break them into polypeptides, okay? After polypeptides, then we go into dipeptides, and then amino acids. So when you eat that red meat, you don't absorb red meat. Hello? This is the point. When somebody tells you white meat is better than red meat, ask them, how is it better, yet we don't absorb white meat, we absorb amino acids? Okay? <laughs> Questions in Anzi Apple. So we break down all these proteins into dipeptides and into amino acids, and then we absorb the amino acids. These amino acids go and form neurotransmitters, they go and form muscle repairs and all that, uh, and that is it. Some of them give you energy. And then we go to the fats. Now fats are broken down to triglycerides, and then these triglycerides are actually broken down to free fatty acids and glycerol, and then you absorb the monoglycerides into the bloodstream. Okay? So when it gets into the bloodstream, it's not tallow anymore. It's not ghee. It is the monoglycerides that get into the bloodstream and they are ferried all the way uh, to the fat cells. However, I want you to know this, that most fats are not even taken into the bloodstream. They're absorbed into the lymphatic system. There are, blood, there, are, there are lymphatic vessels in the small intestines that are called the luteal vessels. They're the ones that absorb fat. Therefore, again, another question comes here to your doctor, Dr. Dr. Tari. As you tell me, that tallow will solidify and clog my arteries the same way it solidifies on the plate. Please, tell me where fat is absorbed. Is it absorbed directly into the bloodstream or into the lymphatic system? Because fat is not directly absorbed into the bloodstream. It is absorbed into the lymphatic system. So therefore, there is no way it can actually come in and clog blood vessels. So ask your doctor those questions. And then see how he starts throwing jargons to scare you out so that you don't ask more questions. So that he can actually stamp his authority as Daktari. Okay? So those are the three that are under the macronutrients. They are needed in large quantities because they are very essential. Now, after macronutrients, there is now a place where we head to straight and that is the micronutrients. So in the body, we have macronutrients needed in larger volumes. And then we have micronutrients needed in, slower, in, lower, in lower volumes or in lower amounts. So under the micronutrients, we have two classes. We have the vitamins and then we have the minerals. If you're bright already, you have written macronutrients, the three. And then micronutrients, the two. One side is vitamins, one side is minerals. Our topic of the night is not the vitamins because the vitamins, we've actually talked about them. In our previous lives, we talked about the fat-soluble vitamins, and I would like you to actually type down the fat-soluble vitamins. If you're a good student and you remember the fat-soluble vitamins, kindly type down the four fat-soluble vitamins. 
Ah, that will be amazing. As I take you through the B vitamins, I want you to take me through uh, the, the, the fat soluble vitamins. Now, one side we have fat soluble vitamins, the other side we have water soluble vitamins. We said water soluble vitamins are the B vitamins and vitamin C, the ascorbic acid. Now, vitamin B vitamins, vitamin B1, of course, all of you know that is thiamine, the one that is actually given to people who are chronic alcoholics because alcohol depletes vitamin B1. So that, that shaking syndrome is actually a deficiency of vitamin B1. So you're given vitamin B1 to actually help you replace uh, these problems. Okay. And then vitamin B2, of course, you know all of it, riboflavin. I don't want you to cram these names. And I don't want to use these names to actually stab my authority. No. <laughs> I'm using these names to actually open up your head a little bit. Okay. Because when you become a doctor, you must walk that path. And then vitamin B3, which is niacin. Niacin is a very good vitamin, which helps you in lowering uh, the cholesterol in the system. But again, there is no essential reason for you to lower cholesterol. But again, if you have excess of this cholesterol, it's actually going to expose you to problems. But that cholesterol should never be blamed. Blame the foods that you're eating that are actually causing the rise in, in, in cholesterol. So this niacin vitamin B3 can actually come in to actually help you drop those levels of cholesterol. And actually the bad lipids, the triglycerides in the system. Okay, number three, number four was we have B1 the thiamine, we have B2 the uh, riboflavin, B3 the niacin, B4 is not there. We said B4, B8, B10, and B11 are not there, and we said the reason. So, if you've never watched that live for B vitamins, please go and do yourself uh, a favor. So, B5 is pantothenic acid, B6 is pyridoxine. Pyridoxine is the one that is actually involved in nerve problems. So, if you have a deficiency of B6, nerve issues. And that's why you're given uh, the, 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 the Neurobion Forte, a tablet that actually has multivitamins. Where? Multivitamins. <laughs> anyway, story for another day. B6 is pyridoxine. B7 is biotin. Remember when we were talking about biotin, we talked about the egg, right? And we said that biotin is a vitamin that is actually uh, very good from the egg. But this biotin is inhibited by another one called bilivadin. So for you to get adequate absorption of vitamin B7, the biotin from the egg, you must heat it. Because when you heat it, you destroy the bilivadin and then you absorb the B vitamins. Again, for those of you who don't remember, bilivadin was also discussed when you were talking about jaundice. Do you remember jaundice? So we said bilivadin is the one that actually gives stool its color. <laughs> goes and converted to uh, urobilinogen and stacobilin. Urobilinogen gives urobilin, which gives the urine the color, and the other one gives stool the color. All the same, let's come back. Now, the most important one is vitamin B9, which is found in beans, found in the liver, and the red meats. Vitamin B9 is good for your DNA. That's why it's called folate. And we said that those tablets that you take all the time, the tablets that you take all the time that are uh, folic acid tablets, they are not, they don't have any vitamin B9. They are synthetic vitamin B9. So therefore, ignore them. So we are just doing a recap of the B vitamins. And then now we have vitamin B12, which is the cobalamin. Now vitamin B12 is a very good one again because it plays a very good role in nerve and brain development. And then now the last one is vitamin C, which is a part of the water-soluble vitamins. There's another one that behaves like vitamin and it's water-soluble, it's called choline. The one that is used to make neurotransmitters. Okay, but that one put it aside. And then of course you've answered the question that the fat-soluble vitamins are A, D, E and K, ADEC or DECA. Those are the fat-soluble vitamins. On that note, I put up a video today that was saying that some of your skin products that you people are taking, the serums and all that, they are very expensive nowadays. And you take them to actually help you nourish your skin because they, they are fortified with vitamin C. And I told you that is a super lie. Why is it a lie? It is a lie because vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin. And for you to absorb things on your skin, if you are applying a gel or an ointment on your skin and you want the medicine in the ointment to be absorbed that ointment must be a fat soluble base so it must be a base that can actually solubilize in fat so that whatever it's carrying can actually diffuse into the fat and then you absorb it in the skin so the skin absorbs things that are soluble in fat not the ones that are soluble in water so as you constantly take that vitamin c in that serum you're just masking the symptoms of that disease because skin conditions are gut problems 
So fix the gut and your skin goes back to glowing. Start fasting. When you're fasting, you help yourself absorb these vitamins. But impo most importantly, vitamin C cannot be absorbed in the skin because it's a water-soluble vitamin. So you're actually masking the skin problems, the symptoms, while failing to fix the gut, which is the cause of skin problems. So once you fix the gut, skin conditions disappear. But for you, who is gullible, you want to be lied to, to take a skin uh, serum product that has vitamin C, buy it around 3,000 to 5,000 shillings to apply it on your skin to mask the symptoms when the real deal is your gut. Now vitamin C, shock on you, it will not be absorbed through the skin. It will not. It is a water-soluble vitamin. And the skin absorbs fat-soluble things. All the same. Let's keep moving. So now... You have vitamin A, D, E, and K that are fat-soluble. They dissolve in fat and they're absorbed easily. The difference between these two vitamins is one is water-soluble and anything that is soluble in water leaves the body through the kidneys. You urinate it out. Therefore, B vitamins which are soluble in water plus vitamin C, it is very easy for you to go into the deficiencies of these vitamins. Why? Because they, they dissolve in water and they leave through the kidneys. So you excrete them out so fast. But the fat-soluble vitamins are the ones that can actually cause you more toxicities. Why? Because they dissolve in fat and they are retained in the body for a long period of time. So therefore, their chances of accumulating are very high. So something that you leave the body so fast cannot accumulate so fast. That means their toxicities of B vitamins and vitamin C is very low. But the toxicities of A, D, E, and K are very high. Why? Because they are retained into the body. <laughs>